Great columnist for the LA Times, star of Around the Horn, Bill Plaschke, joining us on the program. Bill, thanks for joining us. Level of concern over repeating the Lakers or the Dodgers right now? More people are freaking out about the Lakers, really freaking out. What's LeBron James doing in the game last night? So late in the blowout, which it didn't matter, and he turned his ankle again. Yeah, people people think the Dodgers, and I agree, the Dodgers, they've got a lot of season left. They got great pitching. They're gonna make the playoffs. They're gonna be fine. They may they may, they may not be the best team in baseball history, as I predicted before the season. <laughs> 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 not one of my finer moments, but um, but they're gonna be they're gonna be fine. The Lakers, people are freaking out because LeBron's, you know, they don't know how LeBron's ankle is. AD's fragile. They if if they win this thing, it'll be LeBron's greatest achievement ever. Because no team's ever come from a seven seed to win it. No team's ever had to win 17 games to win it. And they got to do it on LeBron's back, and he's been hurt most of the year, and he keeps getting hurt. And AD's always – you notice when AD hits the floor, he's always wincing, he's always grimacing, he's always groaning. So he's got all that going for him. So, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of concern about the Lakers. I think people think they'll they'll get they'll beat Golden State, or at least they'll get, they'll get in this seven or eight seed, and they'll probably win the first round. But I don't think people think they can beat the Clippers. And I think that's what people are really concerned about out here. Do you think the Clippers tried to avoid the Lakers strategically? Yes, absolutely. So did the Nuggets. They were both fighting each other, trying to <laughs> invest all their players. <laughs> absolutely, they're trying to avoid the Lakers. They're trying to wait to, they're trying to, wait to get them to the last round of the, of, the, of the conference finals. But that may not work. By then, the Lakers could be in rhythm, and LeBron could have his confidence, and they could be rolling by then. I think you want to get the Lakers early. But, yeah, you know, I, I agree with that. But I was wondering about with LeBron and load management. Like, do you think that there's any chance that maybe he, you know, stayed out even longer just as precautionary measures so he'd be ready? Oh, to absolutely. Go? Oh, I wrote before the season he should take at least one, one or two month vacation. He was mad from the very start. Remember this, Dan? He was upset at the 71 game, uh, you know, break. That's all they had. He wanted to start the season after January. So he was upset about that already. Yes, I think absolutely he held out. And that's why I think the sky's not falling. I think LeBron and AD, I think they're both going to be fine. I think Lakers are going to win another championship. But I think and I think one of the reasons is they're going to wake they're going to wake up a, a month from now. Everybody's going to realize how rested LeBron is and how rested AD is. And I think clearly, I think he nursed that ankle and I think he clearly wanted the vacation and smart for him. The NBA Messed up schedule this year, and the NBA was so messed up. You all talked about it on the show ad nauseum. All the injuries, all the forced games, the rush games, the compressed schedule, it made for a terrible, terrible regular season. And LeBron was just getting, you know, was just p- paying him back. He was just getting his. They do well against Steph Curry, but there's always that if Steph somehow goes crazy here. Steph can't score 100 points. <laughs> I mean, can he? Well, but let's say he gets – 40 something like yeah, when does it become to, dangerous here oh he's got to get i just don't think it ever becomes dangerous i just don't think that's i just don't think the warriors say they're great to get this far they're, they're they're a worthy opponent but no steph's their whole team and i don't think it i don't think and i don't think i don't think the lakers think that either i think they their sights are set on phoenix right now i think probably I think they think they could beat Golden State. I think, and I think, I, and and I would agree with them on that. I don't think this is, but it'll be the most watched game. Remember the the last time they played, it was like thirty million people watched it. There'll be a, it's just going to be the most watched pl- playoff game this early ever in history. But I just don't think it'll be much of a contest. But do you think he truly believes Steph Curry is the MVP? Because his buddy Chris Paul has been equally valuable for the Phoenix Suns, but LeBron campaigning late for Steph Curry. No, LeBron thinks he's gonna. He should be the MVP. <laughs> he, he he always does things. He's, he, no, yeah, he's just he's just saying that. He was just saying that to uh, jack up the the game and get you know and maybe get to Steph's head a little bit. That's that's what he was he was saying. Yeah, no, I don't think he believes. I think he would vote for Chris Paul for. He probably vote for Joel Embiid before he vote for he vote for Jokic. He'd vote for Jokic probably. Uh, he'd vote for himself. He doesn't think – yeah, LeBron doesn't think anybody should be MVP ever but him any year ever, <laughs> period. He's Bill Plaschke of the L.A. Times, contributor to Around the Horn. What was your Wait, take? Wait, Dan, when I started this show, I was a star. Now I'm just a contributor. 
I'll be lucky to be a freelancer by the time the show ends. So. You said star, I said contributor, so I I, I covered uh, okay. both both. Woody Page just texted me and said he's a contributor. You're not a star, so I. He, well, he's right. He's actually correct about that. That is the accurate. Uh, your takeaway from the Hall of Fame weekend was what? It sucked because Kobe wasn't there. I don't care what we wrote a million stories before this the, the ceremonies. We talked about Kobe and wrote the whole history of his life. It was about Kobe, and he wasn't there. I mean, it just – it really stunk to me. It was really – obviously, Tim Duncan's speech was incredible. I thought that was really, really, really incredible. Him talking about pop was really incredible. Um, Rudy T's speech was off the hook, off the off the butt. I miss Kobe, and Kobe should have been there to exchange jabs with the guys. He should have been there to thank – you know, Vanessa didn't thank any Laker, and he didn't, did not mention any Laker in her speech because – she didn't know what Kobe would have said. She wasn't going to speak for her late husband. So a mm. lot of Lakers went unrecognized. I think a lot of the emotion was drained out of the thing. I just thought it – I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to be emotional about it. I think it's so cool that Kobe's in, and I'm glad he's in, but it really sucked that he wasn't there. It really stunk. It was really – I thought the whole thing was just a real hard – it was real painful. It was supposed to be celebrating his greatness, and I thought we just – remember the absence of his greatness. And it was it was really hard. I thought it was hard. Rudy Tomjanovich, though, grabbed some headlines when he said Robert Ori belongs in the Hall of Fame. You oh, have- he does. Oh, he does. Well, he absolutely does. I was here for a lot of that. Yeah. Big Shot Bob, he was the best player I've ever seen under pressure in the finals. In, in How many rings does he have? I mean, Seven. no, I, I think if you're going to put different people like that in the Hall of Fame, I think absolutely he belongs in the Hall of Fame. For what? If we're, we're going to celebrate championships – if we're going to celebrate pressure shots and pressure players. And I loved it because he, he said, he, he told me once, the reason he was so good in April and May instead of early in the season is that the Kings, the LA Kings who shared the Staples Center with him, were done playing. So they got the ice out from under the floor so the floor was warm. <laughs> so his, his feet weren't cold in April and May as long as the Kings <laughs> kept losing. And that's a true story. I, I thought, I, I think he should be. And he's a great guy, too. So put great guys in the Hall of Fame. Rudy T's in the Hall of Fame. Put, put Corey in the Hall of Fame. Okay, but is Derek Fisher a Hall of Famer? Well, he made a couple. He didn't. No, I don't think he had the impact that Ori had. But he's Ori got had, five titles. He's got I know. more career points. He's played in more playoff games than anybody in NBA history. Yeah, but who's made more bigger shots than Ori for different teams? Also, Fisher did it for the same team. How many different teams did Ori win the championships with? But if I Three, put, I, I can put Ori in, but if I put Ori in, then all of a sudden am I putting Julian Edelman into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Well, maybe so. I, I just think we talk about championships so much, and then we don't do anything to celebrate them. And these guys, certain guys, are like that. And uh, but I know I'm, I'm I know I'm, I'm in a minority. I'm sure most most people think Rob shouldn't be in there, but I think I, I was there and I saw it. I saw his big shots. All right, he had the shot like to beat Sacramento in Game. Four of the of the, of the uh, conference finals, you know, he had that great three pointer. After that game, Glenn Fry, the Eagles, walked past me in the press row, pounded his fist on the press table, looked at me, and said, "The Eagles never wrote a song this good," <laughs> and kept walking. <laughs> that that was Big Shot Bob. That was Robert Ory. Uh, explain the logic of the Dodgers signing Albert Pujols. They're really desperate. They're really, really desperate for hitting against left-handed pitching. They really need someone. They, they have 13 players on the injured list. They got They figure if they figure he can win that. If he can win them one or two games with a late inning home run, maybe start a few games when they need him at first base. Just fill in. They think and they think the clubhouse is veteran enough to absorb him. And if he complains or if he gets disgruntled. This is a, I've heard this, this, this analogy made many times, but it's so true. David Freeze worked in there. Chase Utley worked in there. They're, they have a history of getting veterans who come in there and are tutors and mentors and, and go into the system. They're, they're banking on him suddenly saying, I got I can win a ring. I'll be quiet. I don't need to play. And I think it could, it, it's, it's a no lose for them. They don't do any good. They just cut them. They don't care. It doesn't cost him hardly anything. Yeah, but my concern is he was not happy with not getting playing time with the Angels. Now he's going to be happy with not getting playing time with the Dodgers? Well, I'm going to, he's on a press call today. I'm going to ask him that direct question, or somebody will ask him that question. We'll find out. That's, that's a concern, Dan. That's a concern. But I think, again, 
you've seen players like this, veterans who have a chance to win a ring. The Dodgers still have the best run differential in the National League. They're still the best team in the league. I think they learn to subjugate their egos and learn to and realize it's about big. It's, it's about more than them. Where the Angels had no shot. They have no shot. Dodgers have a real shot. Maybe he'll be more of a team player there. We'll see. But that's a definite – that's got to be one of the first questions he's asked today in the press conference. I'll leave you with this. If you could start your team with one, Kobe, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Oh, I'm taking Kobe. I'm taking Kobe because because I want to end. I want to start my team my team with a guy who can end the game, who will end the game, who will end the moment, who will own the moment. And Tim Duncan was great, and Garnett was great, but Kobe was a man on that. No, I would I would start with. How about you? Uh, if it was today's NBA, then I'm going to take Kobe, but. If it's back in the you know eighties nineties, then I probably strongly consider Duncan. I I, I think Duncan's underrated. Uh, you know he won five titles. He was MVP in the finals three times. He won two league MVPs. He was first or second, you know, All NBA defense fifteen years, All Star fifteen. Like he he did everything you would ask a great player to do without any fanfare and really no signature moment. He just. He was kind of perfect for San Antonio. I, I wonder, though, Bill, if he played in L.A. or New York or you know, Boston, would we be looking at Tim Duncan differently if he had this resume? That's a great question because, I mean, the, the guy like Clayton, Kersh- Clayton Kershaw is very quiet like Duncan and just does his job, and he's, he's revered out here. But I want the Kobe brings a Mamba mentality. I know that's such a cliche, and everybody laughs when, they, when I say it. Yeah. But I want my club to have the Mamba mentality. That's why I want Kobe. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's a wrong answer in there. but I, Well, I think Kevin Garnett would be a wrong answer. Well, he had a run there where he put up, you know, like 25, 15, you know, five block shots or four block shots. Like he, he, he put up some pretty big numbers. Yeah, though. he did, but he really wasn't. Didn't have the the, the the consistency and the length of career that these other guys did. He didn't yeah. have, and he wasn't. He wasn't as good as them. He just wasn't as good. Great to talk to you. He's the star of Around the Horn. It's your words, not mine. And, your and, words, not mine. And does a decent job as the columnist for the LA Times. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, thanks. That for, works. Thanks for joining us. Great to catch up with you. Thanks. See you. That's See you, Dan. Bill Plaschke. 